maybe we can read from what? Okay, let's read from 38. Yes, now as they went on their way, he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into a house. This man, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet and heard his word. But Martha was combat about much saving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister did leave me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. 41. But the Lord answered him and said unto her, Mother, Mother, thou art anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, for Mary has chosen the good part. We shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I was meditating about the scriptures and I had many questions which I want to, you know, make you to understand when I'm sharing with you. The first thing was, I was questioning why Martha was concerned because whatever she was doing, she was doing it for God. Amen. And also, the reason why this Mary was sitting, listening to what our Lord was speaking, Jesus said, she has chosen the best part. These are two people, the one who listen to Jesus and the one who just save yeah. and get tired. You know, many people save a lot and they end up being tired because they don't want to have time to listen to Jesus. So what I want to speak with you is be a chosen one. Just be a chosen one. I found that when you choose God, it's not like when He chose you. There are two different things. So I want to share with you about that. When you just choose God, it's not like He chose you. <clears throat> Here you can see that when you are chosen by God, any step you take, God speaks for you. <clears throat> you could see that Martha was doing something that God never chose her for. That is why she could get tired. Many times when you do things, whatever you do, know that if you are chosen to do that, you will never look around or look who's going to help you. Amen. So you could see that Martha, she, she was so tired. She thought she's doing this, you know, to gain favor from Jesus. And Jesus was quiet. To extend that later, she was told that, you see what, this one who's listening to me, has chosen the best part. In other words, Martha was busy with things that Jesus never wanted her to do. Maybe she was cooking and Jesus never wanted to eat. So it is, it's possible that if God chooses you, you will do what He wants Him to do. He wants you to do. But if you choose for yourself, you end up doing things that he doesn't even want you to do. Amen. And these things will make you tired. You will question why people are not helping you on that. So I want you 
to be chosen by him. I don't want you to choose him. If you read John 15, verse 16, the Bible says, He chose you. You are not the one who chose him. So that you go and bear fruits, and your fruits will remain. In other words, if you decide to choose him, it is possible that you will have fruits. Because if you read that scripture, it shows that you are chosen by him so that you go and bear fruits, and those fruits will remain. Amen. 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 I'm just talking about Martha. If you look at Martha, in everything she was very fast, but she lacked the opportunity of showing faith. By the time in Luke 11, verse 18, you could see she was very fast to meet the Lord. She was so very fast to meet the Lord. But the problem was, after she met the Lord, when the Lord says, your brother will rise again, she says, I know in the last day. But do you remember what she said? She said, I know that as long as you're here, you can do anything now. But when Jesus said, yes, I'm the resurrection. Yeah. And your brother will rise. She says, I know in the last day. <laughs> she was, you know, always she had, she was so fast that she learned to understand what the Lord was there for. I mean, she could run to the Lord. She could wake. She could do many things. But she had learned an opportunity of faith that can produce the fruits. Can I say this to you? We need to be chosen by God Amen. than for us to choose God. If you choose God and you are in a place where God chooses you, I want you to understand this. If God chooses you, what you will do, you will put in a place where whatever you are doing, you are doing towards the reason of the way he appointed you. Amen. But if you choose God, Jesus. you have right to live in. Yes, yes, yes. You have right to be the way you want to be. That's why today some people will just say, I'm a man of God, tomorrow I'm a businessman. Yes. Because they chose God. But if God chooses you, no matter what you face, you don't care. Amen. Until God shows up. Your fruits have to remain if you believe say amen. amen. Remember that choosing is a decision of the mind. So if now God chooses by his mind, he inclined your mind to be his mind. I want to say this that if God chooses you, he put his mind in your mind. But if he chooses God, you are saying God must be taking your mind. If you, God takes your mind, it's possible that you won't do what you say. The reason why today we have got frustrations, we have got people who don't know where they are going, is because they put their minds to be of God. But if God chooses you, He brings His mind to your mind. Yes, That's what the Bible says, you have got the mind of Christ. Amen. Today, God will choose you. Amen. If you can reach out to hallelujah. Let me try to show you the difference between chosen by God or you choosing God. If you are chosen by God, you are appointed yes. by God. And if you are appointed by God, there's an assignment in front of you. Whatever you are doing, 
God is away. Remember, you are always faithful because God's eyes are on the faithful. Amen. But if now you choose God and He has not chosen you, you have to do things to be seen that truly you choose God. Whatever you do, you do to prove that you are the one who chose God. And there is no appointment to be chosen. That word is a past participle. It means you have been picked up. Amen. So if you have been picked up by his head, it means he came and among the people and say you are different with others. So I'm taking you to be what you are supposed to be. Amen. And no matter what happens, you will be. Amen. One of our problems is we are choosing God and we become frustrated. Today you are living. You don't know who you are. You don't know what will happen. And you don't know what is happening with you. But if God chooses you, you can be in a place where it's dark. But you don't mind because you know He chose you. I don't know if you're hearing me. You know if He chooses you, He appointed you. And He placed you. So wherever you are, you are in a season that where God wants you to be. It may not be functioning, but it will function. <laughs> if you believe, shout hallelujah. Can I make you to read the scripture you think you know? In 1 Peter 2 9. I want us to look at the scripture. That scripture will blow your mind. 1 Peter. I will read it for you so that you understand. Chapter 2, verse 9. Can I read for you? It's American Standard Version. American Standard, I'm sure we are in America here. It says, But ye are an elect race, an elect race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for God's own possession, that ye may show forth the excellencies of him who call you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I want to show you what that verse means. There are two things in that verse. Number one, already you have been defined. Here you have been defined. The first thing of your holy nation, you have been defined. Please do, you have been defined. Okay, this is the life you need to live. You are a priest in your family. In other words, when you are in your family, those who don't believe God and those who believe God must see God through you when you are serving God. But there's this one holy nation, automatically your character, your lifestyle will show that you represent Jesus. But there's this second part that I want to talk about. You are chosen for a reason. The reason is, is to show excellencies. To show that you can excel when other people are failing. Amen. You hear the best? Yes, Lord. You, you are chosen. You can't fail if you are chosen. You are appointed to excel. You are coming from darkness. That's where you are coming from when God chose you. Amen. You were confused. You didn't know what to happen. But he chose you. He put you to a place where you will excel. Amen. I don't know if you are hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to this. One of our problems is when challenges come, we think we are still on the same place. He took us from darkness. He placed us to a marvelous light. Amen. You know what's the meaning of marvelous light? It means where you are, there's nothing that can hinder your eyes not to see your future. Amen. So you are in a place where you can see. You are in a place where he rules. And in that place where God placed you, 
He placed you in a place where you will excel. It can start like nothing is happening. You know, I love the, like, the story of Joseph, whereby when he's in prison, still you will find that he's excelling in prison. Amen. Wherever he goes, he excels. So this is an issue that we Christians we are not aware of. You can excel where you've been placed. Amen. If you believe, shout hallelujah. As somebody said, what? Are you excelling? Are you excelling? Listen to this. Remember you are chosen. You are chosen to excel. Amen. There is something that I spoke when I was telling God a long time ago. I said, many people know my lifestyle. If now you have called me to come and preach the gospel, people have to see his power. People have to see that I represent him. Amen. That's the scripture. Amen. So the first thing that you will do, if you think you are the one who chose God, understand this, you won't accept. But if you know that God chose you, you will put in a place where whatever you are doing, you will do it for him. Amen. Whatever, whether it's tough or not, you don't mind. Amen. I don't know if you're hearing me. Yes, Sometimes you look at yourself, you see everything speaking against you, and you question, ah, is God chose me? Is he aware? I'm here to tell you he's aware and he's about to raise you and lift you to a higher level. If you believe that, hallelujah. Somebody is about to excel you. I don't know if you're hearing me. I say somebody is about to excel. Let me try to tell you, when God chooses you, He chose you from things that you were busy with. Some of you were so busy. Can I tell you this? All the people that God chose, including Moses, was busy. Can you see David there? Have you ever read about David? If you want to know about David, remember what Eliab said. Eliab, when he saw David coming to the battle, he said, <laughs> you know, I love a lot when I found the scripture. He said, I, I know you. I mean, I know you. you. You want to be confident for nothing. And you are coming to see the battle. He was saying that. But no, go back to those few sheep. <laughs> you, 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 if, if you can see, if you can read about David, you find that he was chosen following the few sheep. And in those few sheep, there will be anointing from God that will make him to fight for those few sheep. To extend that he didn't want to lose anyone. He will protect them for the glory of God. I don't know if you're hearing me. Sometimes God will choose you to a point that you become a protective of yes, something Lord. which is useless. Come on. But he maintain you for a certain time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When he place you there, he just wants you to be, you know, to, to understand that he has placed you there. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are so focused on what people are saying is useless. But you don't know that you're, God wants to graduate you too. You know, if you can be in, in a small church, you can be a pastor of a small church, but you try to be so faithful in that small church. And when God is looking at you and saying, yes, this is the person that if I give him an army, he won't allow anybody to dry up. I don't know if you hear me. Many people that you know, they are very big. They were faithful in small so that they become faithful in much. I don't know if you hear me. So God chose you and place you in small things and look on how far you will do this. And you look at your small finances, how you will manage them. And you look at the small job that you are doing. And he says, oh, my child is faithful even in small things. Let me choose him for the big things. Let me prophesy you. From today, there's a promotion that is coming to you in the name of Jesus. And if you believe, shout hallelujah.